Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Ears to the East, where we're going to have a little bit of talk about something uh, a bit different from usual, because this has been, uh, well, here in Japan, this has been coming up a lot in the news, but I've seen it also coming up uh, abroad, and that is in regards to, we'll jump straight to the chase, is the whole Johnny Kitagawa, Johnny's Entertainment thing. Um, And the reason I thought I'd bring this up today is because I was reading an article about it, and I didn't really realise, I think I kind of I'm not surprised, but I didn't realize how big Johnny's was in that it's like the biggest entertainment agency. And I was finding out it's probably like the biggest entertainment agency in the world. You know, it's absolutely huge. And neither of, well, none of us three are really super familiar with most of our artists because they tend to deal with boy bands. But I thought this would be an interesting subject because of the fact that, again, it's been all over the news and it does have knock on effects when we're talking about things like Japanese music, especially considering the size of this agency. So, um, Considering that I've got a little bit more knowledge than the other uh, two guys, and we've just been looking through the BBC article today, um, I'm going to give a little bit of an intro, if this is okay with you guys. I'll yeah, yeah, go for it. Bring some speed. Please, I actually never even heard that name before until today. Well, yeah, this, this is the interesting thing, is that, like, um, with us being dudes, it's a <laughs> mixture actually here. You might not have even heard of the Johnny's Entertainment thing. Now, a lot of people will be familiar with companies like, uh, companies like, well, <laughs> Uh, artists like AKB and you know the big pop groups and then they have subgroups if you know baby metal you'll know they came from Sacra Gakuin and they were a subunit of um, that uh, Johnny's basically been responsible for some really big boy bands and boy bands are huge here as well you know we don't hear about them in the way we hear about k-pop boy bands but they're massive in the domestic market um exile is a particularly famous one exile was like a huge thing that's had loads of subgroups i'd say exile probably i don't know it's for sure but i'd say exile probably have made more money than akb ever did um but obviously they're that boy bands focused their girls there was things like arashi which was massive you know um, and these mostly, as far as I'm aware, both of them and pretty much all these major boy groups came through this agency called Johnny's. Um, I should point out, first of all, before anyone's thinking about it, yes, I am aware, and he was laughing as well, Johnny's is the British slang for a condom, okay? <laughs> I'm just going to get that out of the way so that anyone... <laughs> I'm sorry, Benedict. I, just, I had to address that. I've been here long enough that that joke's kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm not making it in my head, but then I suddenly realised, yeah, calling a company Johnny's was not the best start but considering where this story is going i should probably leave that one slightly kind of fitting unfortunately yeah (laughs) fitting in the wrong kind of way (laughs) so basically um as with a lot of these agencies were set up by one fellow who's at the top of it johnny kidgawa um i'm assuming that's not his name by birth but i don't know um and so uh fella died in 2019 and then he uh, gave the company over to his a relative but it was broken by a bbc documentary that um there had been some uh accusations of like uh sexual misconduct i'm not sure exactly to what level it goes i'll be honest i was not particularly interested in reading into the details as usual if it was just like rumors i wouldn't even bring that up because i'm not interested in rumors but it seems that it's pretty much substantiated that there was some stuff going on his relative who took over the company she basically confirmed that she was aware of it and it seems to be one of those things where as popular as this agency and as well known as he was it was kind of like everyone had a vibe about it um yeah, everyone kind of knew that it was probably mm-hmm. going on like that um i was referencing for anyone uh, English I was referencing it kind of gave me a slightly icky feeling of the whole um uh what was his name Jimmy Savile like the whole yeah, Jimmy yeah. thing where like he, he was like really popular and mainstream but everyone kind of felt like something was off with him but yeah. then when it got confirmed it was like oh, after I, I I said this before we started I said it's, it's fucking yeah. ironic the BBC are the ones to break this so. <laughs> yeah exactly um the irony the it is a sort of uh, deliciously disgusting irony, but the, the truth is, if if it's a if it's true and it comes out, then it's best to be um, out in the open than not. And of course, there's been a lot of stories of things like this in media uh, companies and some Hollywood as well. Um, so, well, so say reminds me of that. What was his name? Like Weinstein? Yeah, the Harvey no, yeah. Weinstein. Yeah. I again, without going into details, from what I've heard. I think it's the, the the crimes in question are more Harvey Weinstein than Jimmy Savile because Jimmy Savile's stuff went to a truly unspeakable level. Whereas well, none of this is good, but you know, I mean, as far as I'm aware, it was kind of that real taking advantage of the the power he had kind of thing, which is what was going on with uh, this fella 
uh, in a sort of a Weinstein-esque way. So again, we're not going to be talking specifically about the cases because that's something we don't know and that's something for a court and a jury. What we're yeah. more talking about here, uh, and I'm, I'm, to be honest, it's, I'm only ashamed that he's dead because of the fact that he won't be able to see uh, any punishment sure. for what he's done. Um, but what we more wanted to talk about today was kind of the effect this has on the industry because as mentioned we don't really follow any of their artists specifically but it is interesting how this affects things and two major areas came up now first one the article the three of us read it was a lot of the articles dedicated to how um companies have responded by rescinding their um support for artists who are on johnny you know the, the um uh, the commercial deals they have. And I can understand, they, I think it was Nissan who said that they don't, I, yeah, I might be Nissan, wrong. Nissan, Toyota we as well. That is a, I, I, I believe that Nissan were the ones who said we don't want to put a single penny through, a single yen through Johnny's. And I completely get that. But there is that thing which, um, first of all, I wanted to talk about the fact that obviously this could end up affecting the careers of artists who are on Johnny's, who could include the very people who might well have been victims of mm. various abuses. So it is that's the rather awkward thing partly what we think would be a good way to move forward it was a mention as well that it's really strange that the company did not make very quick steps to change its name um i wonder what you think about that actually Could i you start i i, I kind of feel for the company a little bit here um because there's a lot of employees there isn't there yeah there is and they're, they're damned if they do damned if they don't um if they try to change something or they made it public they're damned like, like, you know, it's been public now. You've seen the reaction. So they could they could never go public with that, or at least try to hide it for as long as they could. But, so they, but what you're saying is, I mean, I mean, obviously honesty is the best policy with this sort of thing, with this kind of thing, definitely. Yeah. But what you're kind of saying is that any attempts to say, well, look, the guy is dead. Can we deal with this internally? That that was kind of never going to be it was always going to look like a cover up if they tried. But yeah, yeah. That's it, what it, I wanted. Sorry. It, it, Sorry, it was yeah. ne- it was never yeah it was never going to be a uh, no, there was never going to be a happy ending to this no matter what you look at it whoever took over it, his granddaughter I mean I got mad respect for his um his, his niece or his granddaughter or something like that I thought it was his niece let me just quickly check but, but carry on while I, I'll, but I'll but she, yeah me. but she's come out and she's done all the right things she's a she's admitted it she tried to take over she's tried to stem the the, the company from what it looks like in the articles again I don't know the full story I can only know go off what I've read. Um, but it seems like she's done all the right things to say, okay, yeah, okay, well, this is bad. We're trying to move forwards and stuff like that. It, it was his niece, by the way. Just yeah. So, in that in that kind of way, mad respect. But the the if she hadn't said that, she would have been condemned for covering it up. You know, at the same time. So there was there was no. It, it was it's it's such an evil act that no matter what you do, the consequences. As soon as you commit something like that, the consequences are freaking huge. There's no, there's no way out of that. Like, like as a company, mm. you're, you're you're damned either way. Like, well, his name's above the door. So the problem mm. is, is that his action, kind of like with the Weinstein thing, you know, his, yeah, his actions then are going to tarnish everyone who's worked there because it also puts on the suspicion to other people of, well, did you know? Like with the BBC thing, they started asking other people who worked in the BBC, well, but surely you knew what Savile was doing. Um, and I. I don't know enough about Johnny's to really know that, but it is an interesting thing. Probably us talking about this because we're a little bit outside the direct knowledge. We're able to really comment about maybe how the general public might respond. And I, I for example, I don't know whether his niece would have known anything about this. It's, none of us can really say in this Nobody, is evidence yeah. we don't know about. But I do agree that she did the right thing to, uh, uh, if, if, she, if she did come out straight away and say, look, I know it and yeah, it's true then at least that's better than trying to cover it up. Now, I don't know exactly how that came out, but yeah, I agree. It's better to be transparent if that's the case, especially considering his name is still above the door. But maybe, you know, maybe there's several things you can talk about when it comes to rebranding, but this is one where I think his name doesn't need to be above the door. No, but yeah. that covering? Oh, I don't even think that. I don't even think the company will survive after this, not with the amount of people pulling out. The only thing I disagree with that is- They like got you, a lot of money. They got a lot of money and they're going to lose billions um yes but they are probably going to be very good at restructuring i mean they might separate the company up mm-hmm. they might rebrand and you know change management and stuff and take it out of the niece the niece might have to sell it anyway yeah what annoys me a little bit is like you said at the beginning the guy's already dead he's already cocked it like he, he'll face no re- repercussions for this whatsoever the only people that are really missing out are the artists or the acts or whatever contracted to that company now 
Um, That's a difficult place to be. Yeah, yeah, because they they're now going to lose out on money because people sponsorships and stuff like that are pulling them out. Nobody wants to hire them because they're attached to this company. They might not be able to find work, or maybe get a contract with a with another studio, or they might be able to get like an indie studio or something. Maybe not something that's paying them as well as they are now, I, or or with the uh, the benefits only... of being secure as an artist. It's there's so much kind of going on there. I think um, the company is so big that most of them will be able to keep on going off of reputation and goodwill. But yes, it will certainly have a massive effect on the career of many of the people working there. So I can see Benedict's like he's he's got his big microphone ready to go. So <laughs> I, I'm just gonna see. Sorry, I'm gonna let you jump in for a second there. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, I don't have a lot of like uh, information about all that stuff, but um, no, no. Yeah, I feel like Neon is saying it's really difficult, especially in a case like that where the actual perpetrator is already dead and can't like yeah you cannot punish him but everybody else gets punished and like the whole thing gets pulled down even though there's not really any crime happening there anymore as far as i'm guessing that's kind of what i wanted to ask the whole time like was it that's just good. the allegations about this one guy or was there like multiple people well, there's um, gonna be, there's guess... gonna be people guilty by association, isn't there? They're gonna hunt down the people that helped him when he was alive. Um, they're gonna hunt down the people that cooperated, hid it, the information. Um, there's gonna be, yeah, this, because this is, you know, this is gonna I, go I get the aspect like of companies. You know, there's a stain on that name, so you cannot support something like that. That's I, I get it, but also, yeah, it's a shame for this whole company because they're. I'm guessing with it being the biggest company out there or one of the biggest there are a lot of people working in there and mm. it's not like those people did those crimes you know yeah for, for exactly. the, ten, for the yeah. 10 bad eggs that are in that company there's going to be like hundreds of thousands of employees but they are suffering now but they're the ones i think there's people. also there's also a scale which is a difficult one this is the one that came up with the whole bbc thing is that there will be some people who i have to assume will have known what was happening and deliberately turn a blind eye. But it's not like you have some people who know and some people who weren't. There's always going to be shades of grey. There's going to be some people who knew, some people who knew a little bit, some people who were suspicious but didn't speak out. And it is hard. Where do you draw the line? Because some people are just trying to do their job. Some people kind of know, well, look, he's super powerful. If I say anything, it's not going to have any effect. It's very hard to judge and condemn people afterwards. I mean, this is why I'm a little bit... Um, reluctant to overly be complimentary of his niece although she seems to have come out because I, I don't know I mean she could have mm. literally known nothing or she could have known quite a lot I don't know enough about her to say that so again we're commenting from the outside I should point out by the way anyone at home if you know more about this because we're doing this based on articles by all means this is all sort of hearsay and talking about the ideas of you know how to address these things so if you know more details feel free to jump in and correct us we're obviously not condemning we're just kind of trying to kind of piece out I think as a lot of people are how do you address this from the outside? Um, and considering, uh, obviously, we can draw parallels to this. For me, one of the darkest things about this is that, unfortunately, it leaves a little bit of a stain on not just the company, but the Japanese music industry. And the reason I point this out, and, mm -hmm. and this is something that I think the three of us have come across. I know Neon and I have definitely come across this, maybe Benedict's as well, is that when we're talking a lot about um, Japanese female groups, uh, there are some groups who I won't really cover them because I think it's a little bit like maybe there's something a little bit, a little bit just creepy about it. And, you know, so sometimes you'll see groups where it's like a little bit too sexualized and it's not really my thing. But then sometimes you're going to groups which are quite cute and people will, you know, a lot of Western audiences will be like, oh, there's something weird about that. Feel, they kind of feel uncomfortable about it. Um, straight down, we've heard this about maid cafes as well, which if you know how it works, it's a, it's an innocent thing. It is a bit weird, but it's like it's actually quite sweet. And if you take in the concept, it's a really positive thing where everyone's kind of getting something positive from it. And if that's your thing, if you want to pay for it, then great. Um, and the same with idol groups. But I get the feeling that now this has put the air of, oh, there's something creepy and sexual going on in the Japanese music industry it's kind of put that in there and I get the feeling that people, because this is a BBC article, I get the feeling that people from a Western perspective might now look at other things that hopefully haven't had those problems in reality, but I'm I'm pretty sure haven't and might start judging them in the same way. It's like, oh, look at all those idol groups in Japan where they have young girls, all that must be sexual, you know. Um, I can't help but Isn't feel... Isn't that the way you perceive like the reaction to this? Like this? I th because to me, I wouldn't say like this influences my opinion on that kind of stuff at all because that's yeah one guy i mean you had the same 
thing with the Weinstein guy. It's not like the whole movie industry in Hollywood is like, I don't know, doing some But, sex crimes. I mean, <laughs> we, we, I, all, I, we, all, I, we all know Hollywood's all a bunch of undead vampires that reach the, uh, the, the life force from young women. That's so. a different topic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when it comes to Hollywood, obviously, I... I I mean, the Hollywood thing, I think actually the Weinstein thing, I think really kickstarted the whole Me Too movement. And, you know, that's something where that had um, two repercussions. One was it really did have a good effect on, you know, time's up for these creeps who do this kind of stuff who are like, oh, we're going to have an audition and the audition is going to be about whether I want to sleep with you or not. It got rid of those creeps. But it had the repercussion, of course, then it became like a, you know, then it got spread too wide and it could be used against people who were, you know, maybe just being, you know, yeah, like, again, we got into those areas of grey. And this is kind of what worries me is that Japanese culture is very quirky which means it very much makes itself a target for that kind of thing um you know which nothing wrong with that but it means that when there's this kind of thing going around i just worry that things that were not sexual could start to be perceived as you know people start you know looking at them the wrong way I, um yes definitely look for people in the industry like this yeah but i worry about whether the general opinion of japanese pop is going to be tainted by this rather than just looking for the creeps who need to be ousted. Uh, I, I think there's a, there's a case to be made for a bit of both, though. I, I feel like the people that have already made their opinions about, like like you said, cute Japanese idol groups and stuff, I feel like their opinions are not going to change. It's not going to shift. If they hear yeah, about this, it's, yeah. it's just going to reinforce the, like, what they already think, that the Japanese are yeah. completely seedy and it's horrible and underage girls and boys and all that crap, which is not the case. It, it is not the case. Mm. Um, but I hope it does because there are people that take advantage, uh, you know. Um, and as much as we don't want to admit it, I think as three people that like really, really love the Japanese scene and really, really love that music industry and all that stuff, it has had a more than shady um, reputation in history over the last, you know, 20, 30 odd years and stuff like that. Um, Do you think so? How how so? I, I mean, I, I, may, I feel I'd like, like to hear from you on this because obviously you're outside of Japan, so you 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 probably got a. Uh... I, to be honest with you, I, my opinion on this, I've never seen the Japanese industry that way. Um, my from my knowledge of this is from what I've been told from people in my Discord, people that I hang around with that all have different opinions to me, which is basically mm. like obviously you've got obviously the the legal. Um, age limit of Japan was 14 at one point. I believe they've raised that again since. But then you've got obviously things that obviously make the Western audience a little bit uncomfortable, uh, which is like things like idol swimsuit edition stuff, yeah. uh, which you can tell is like, it, it's a cultural thing, but even I will say as a Westerner, for me, seeing, seeing 14 year old girls in a see-through swimsuit makes me fucking uncomfortable. It yeah, does. yeah, I think it I does. think we can all agree on that. Yeah, I think you know, we can all agree. Um, so I understand that side of it as well. So it's it, it it's a balance. I don't feel like perception I, is going to change. It's just going to reinforce their opinions. But I also hope that the people that are responsible for that kind of crap do suffer the consequences of what they're intentionally doing. But hmm. I feel I mean, it, it, if it takes not, a little bit of fallout to get these kind of people, yeah then I'm willing, I think anyone is willing to accept a little bit of fallout. I'd rather a little bit of collateral and these kind of people locked up and away. Yeah, than, um, I feel... I feel uh, you want to minimise as well the um, the the, yeah, the, 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 the harm it causes the industry. Yeah, the difference is, is seeing female idol groups like uh, Sako Gakuen uh, and seeing all these girls that dress in school sh dresses and stuff like that. We all know and we've been here enough that we all know they're all in their 20s and they just look really, really young and that's the way you know, the, the culture is, and that's the way they're perceived, and that's just the way it has been for, before any of us were fucking born, you know? Um, so that... I, I I did want to, sorry, because I, I feel like you're mentioning something you mentioned before in a previous video, and I wanted to tie this in with what you said mm. before, because we talked in a previous video about how cuteness is perceived, it's and, perceived. you know, we had a little bit of a light-heart chat, light-hearted chat about how cuteness, where is that line between something being cute and being potentially creepy, and, you know, That's how much of that is... That's what I to get into as well. 
Okay, so I'm going to bring Benedict on this as well. Yeah, yeah I love, love that Benedict. Basically, basically <laughs> what 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 we said on this before was because I I sort of said you know initially when I first came to Japan even things like because I was here when Scandal first debuted and they were in school outfits and that put me off listening to them because I was just like school outfits a bit weird. Then I kind of realised it kind of made more sense. I got used to it and I got used to so many things and kind of understood the context and the approach to all that and the attitude towards that in Japan is very different. Um, but there are some things that I still find a bit weird. Like, for example, Sakura Gakuin, I kind of like it because it's cute, but I still feel a bit weird about the fact that they're all school age and they're all in school outfits. Um, it, it makes me feel like I enjoy it, but I, I could never watch or listen to too much of it because then I just feel a little bit like, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like this is like a more like a, a preview of what's coming up when they get a little bit older rather than something I just want to focus on. Um, so, yeah, I do get that there are there are lines in the sand and nothing against Sakura Gakuin. It's just one that maybe I, I you know, I, I'm kind of like, okay, that's probably around about as far as I'd go. Um, and yeah, those sort of swimsuit things, luckily I haven't seen many of them, but maybe it's because I don't look for them. So yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't me, look for them either. But, but once you yeah. kind of told about these things, you, you kind of, you kind of look at it and you're like, but then someone will put it in front of you and it'll be like something where you see, yeah, sometimes you see like the swimsuit things and they're like, 16 15 i don't know how young it goes but i just i don't want to really you want don't to see really it. want to know yeah um it, but even then i'll be honest it's not sexual but yeah there's obviously a sexual undertone if you're showing a certain amount of skin anyway it's just mm -hmm. kind of like one of those things where okay it's like mm, do we really need this so well, this, this is what i mean anyway so as, I, I'm, as gonna bring, I'm gonna bring thing, benedict it's, it's in meant as well. to be yeah as a cultural thing it's meant to be cute it, 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 for them it's not seen as we perceive it because we're westerners uh, because we're taught differently, we're brought up differently to see that as wrong. Uh, and even though it's not, but it, you know, for them, the, swi the swimsuit impact. thing is a bit far. I agree. Like, it, 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 I, is, I that, can't that see any way far. that that's not a little bit sexual. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not overtly sexual, but there's just such a clear sexual undertone that I'm not really keen on yeah, that there's, myself. There's, yeah, there's something really, really not like right with that. Yeah, but yeah. I, it, it's it's that. There could be 95% of the people in the industry that would just like that. They think it's cute and they think it's wholesome. There's always going to be that 5% that make that something more than it fucking is. You that can never is, read someone's intentions. Yeah, I mean, you can that's never the read but that, thing. but that is the thing throughout any industry, like anywhere, yeah. be it Hollywood, be it freaking sick, like somebody like Sequoia, like Aquaman. There is always going to be some minute dickhead that's going to take that fucking too far. <laughs> So uh, can I just say, I love how, as you're saying it, Benedict's nodding like, yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's great for me to do it to Benedict for once, because that's what Howard does for me. I have this fucking old uh, thing stuck in my head, and then Howard talks, I'm like, shit, I'm going to think we got yeah, a yeah, hierarchy yeah, of interrupting. <laughs> like, hierarchy of interrupting. I interrupt everyone because it's just a disease I've got. Neon's pretty balanced, and Benedict's just way too polite. So, <laughs> so that's, that's how this shit happens. Go on, go on. Let's let Benedict. Yeah, go, go on. Yeah, I mean, there are weird stuff in like other countries as well. I mean, in the US, you have things like these, what is it called? These the pageants. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like these, where also little our parents go with their little kids and they dress up like superstars and put on some weird performances. Yeah. It's like they, really they weird because these kids are so young. Um, yeah. It's also, yeah, really weird. But what yeah, I wanted weird. to say about the Japanese cuteness thing and also like getting back to the topic. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you know, because I think, like like I said before, to me, I, something like this, like a scandal like this doesn't really influence my opinion on mm -hmm. what this whole music, uh, Japanese music scene is or like does taint it in it any way. Not really. It's more like what they put out, things like these swimsuit stuff. Like if I see things like that, then I think, okay, that's kind of a weird scene. And also things like, I think that are kind of on the border, things like Lady Baby. I mentioned it before we started the talk. Because, you know, on one side, they sell you this image. Yeah, they are just really cute. It's about cuteness. But then on the other level, they also like sell you this idea that they are lesbians and in a sexual relationship. Uh, and are you talking about this sort of, of there was always that, there was always that sort of combination. Mm. I, 
the lady baby one's an interesting one. Sorry, I told you I was the interruption king. Um, the lady baby one was an interesting one because I didn't get that in the initial iteration, uh, obviously, or in the no. I would say iteration. it's more without the without lady beard actually. Yeah, it, it's in the middle iteration where it was just the two of them. That that middle phase, the uh, artist formerly known as. Um, now the interesting thing, I'm going to be honest. This might just be my brain. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I never really perceived that. I just kind of perceived it like two friends who were a little bit cute to each other, and it was someone in my discord who actually i was talking about the new rare oh, EA thing that came out <laughs> and when the new rare rea thing came out i was chatting about that and then i was just sort of talking about randomly how they stopped being friends suddenly at some point and then became friends and i kind of like jokingly said yeah it's the sort of thing when the background you might find out they were both fighting over the same boy or something and then someone in my discord said oh, i don't think they'd be fighting over boys and i was like mm. what and i looked at it i was like <laughs> has this been overtly said you know I don't think of those words. Has, it, has it been directly said has anyone actually not said really that? I, I and i was like i had never picked up on that and i think it's just because in really? I, I just kind of watched it and yeah i mean it's yeah, pretty I, obvious I, in I, the music videos i guess maybe i'm just not I'm, I'm just, i was you know for somebody as fucking dirty minded as me i was completely oblivious to it as well and, and yeah. again I've, I've had the exact same thing probably the exact same person posting the pictures in the discord and i'm just like I, I got it watching. Did it back. I, how did I miss that? <laughs> yeah, I got it watching it back, and I was like, "Oh yeah, it's there. It's it's really there." But yeah. I was like, on first watching it, it, I think it's just because my brain was not wired to even look for it, and no, I don't. Yeah. Know. So that's like or kind maybe, of the thing. It's like a weird blend of this. They are cute, young, cute girls, but also like, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean so let's be honest. That's a, that's a great head, marketing this... strategy. I mean, if you can't, if you can't so win for the young. cuteness, you do the sexy instead and they're, bolster, they're so, bolster your audience. <laughs> but they're so young in that image that I can't, I think my brain just wouldn't even think of anything that way. I just sort of look at them, oh, they're kind of hugging up to each other. It's like, well, if kids hug up to each other, there's nothing sexual about that, they're kids. Yeah. Um, so in, in my brain, I think that's the place I'd go to. But I agree with what you say. Looking back at it, it could be read that way because, you know, it's very, you know. It, you know and then you kind of don't know like there's people like me who just love the music and are fans of it because of that mm. and maybe there are also some other people who like it for that other reason well i'm sure mm. they're not going to turn down that money if it comes along and that is another question yeah, also How that's uh, pretty interesting that because i'm pretty sure they are not like this is not themselves this is something like their what is it called like their production or management put onto them that image like that's how you have to behave in that way so we can th th sell this certain image to our fans pretty sure about that i think they could either be just like two besties who are very comfortable around each other or they could i mean they could well be they could be lesbians for all we know but i don't think there's anything out there that makes it clear either way and the weird thing is that i i just personally i don't care as i'm sure I mean, obviously they are not putting it out directly because then yeah. it would kind of overstep that line but they kind of hide it in and that's also where i think it can be people from the west watching this can get the wrong impression well i think that comes back to the the company line then i mean if it if you've got that kind of thing where a company's baiting that cash a little bit like oh no well you know we're gonna we're gonna make them look cute together so that people might think there's something going on because of course there's a whole history and now I, i'm not so familiar with manga and anime but i know from talking to other people there's a whole history of like manga at least which is totally about boy boy relationships and girl girl relationships there's like a name for this and it's like a really big thing but of course it's because it's not a very normal thing you know homosexual relationships are not talked about a lot in japan it's kind of seen more as a quirky it's not wrong it's just like oh that's that's weird and of course girls like to watch uh, read like mangas about two boys getting together and then a boy will read a manga about two girls getting together and, and fiction it, yeah well no no it's, it's a whole genre apparently yeah. and it's something where, okay, that's kind of seen as very twee and cute. And so maybe like the whole artist formerly known as Lady Baby thing kind of fits more into that category that it's it's not, it's just kind of like, oh, two girls together, isn't that a sort of a cute, yeah. slightly baby? It's, it's very much in that area where I don't think Japan yeah. draws those lines in the same way that the rest yeah, of the world does. Yeah, but that's, I think, is like the line for, or could be the line for Western people like watching it. At least yeah. for me, that's a lot more influential of my like opinion on this music scene in general than some scandal of yeah. one guy. The, the one and thing I think that's I, probably good. Yeah, the one know. thing I want to point out as well is obviously we've been talking a lot and uh, we've 
as soon as we talked about this, we instantly gone to like female acts, female stuff. True. We have we haven't That's said anything. We, we, we have yeah, we haven't really said anything about like you know that this was in fact a a label that did boy groups. These were these were uh, honestly these were, I don't know much. <laughs> yeah, well, were, yeah, these I, were I, young boys being abused. Like, does that change your opinion in any in any in any way? No, 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 not in the slight. I'm, well, no. I guess you could you could say that um you could say there's an argument for the fact that um women are classically more likely to be the victim of this kind yeah. of thing. So in a way, it's more of a surprise. But I think in in the same way that certain large theistic organizations have been known to target boys in the history um you know yeah. there, do you reckon are, that's why are... they got away with it for so long because we all know no, that, that no, boys I, are less I, likely to come out and say anything and you know, yeah it's, it's yeah. a much no, less I, common I, thing as well i i don't think it is that i mean it, it might be that but i think overall it more comes down to the fact that the guy was just so well regarded i think there's a, a, a parallel to the jimmy savile thing that you can't speak out against someone who's that famous you know, when someone's that famous, it's they very won't hard believe to you. Against. Yeah. And if they do believe you, then it's going to be like a lot of people like, you know, get some fan who's like a massive fan of Johnny's artist who now wants to like kill you in your house or starts writing you death threats or something. I mean, that's the sort of thing you'd have like people who'd be such big fans of like pop artists that they would genuinely think you, you know, send you death threats for like, um, for noticing a known predator, you know, just because it goes against their favorite artist. There yeah. are nutters out there. So I think um, people, you know, and if you work for Johnny's, you're probably seeing some crazy fans out there occasionally. So you just would be like, this is not, I, I'm not, I'm not going to step into the ring with this. Um, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but I'm saying that I think that's probably more of an influence for why it got pushed under the rug. And I think that's a universal thing that you'd find in any country is when someone's that famous, they can get away with shit that they shouldn't be able to get away with. Um, and that's where those kind of speak like up campaigns are so good. Do they have like those. something like Sakura Gakuen with boys, like on um, school each level? That's I, a very good. I, I don't, don't know. Think they do. Uh, one of the interesting things is when you look at the difference between like the sort of the AKBs, the um, Nogazakas, um, you know, the girl groups in general, and then you look at something yeah, like that's X like up. also like you could ask the question why? Because like if you're just interested in cute little kids, then why well, don't you have both? I you know don't. What I mean, I don't know that they don't. I'm. Just, I mean, I'll be honest with you. My knowledge of like the boy bands as a general is minimal enough that it's it's very minimal by comparison. So in the same way that Sakura Gakuen was something that I only found out about like about four years ago, there could be that kind of thing going on for boys that I would just never would see it. So I'm not going to say that doesn't happen. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think when, I don't when think you look the boy, the boy bands really kind of like float any of our boats at all. So we, <laughs> tend, we, we tend not to pay much attention to it. But, but yeah, the, sure. It's just the, would be interesting the, to well, know. Uh, just for context, because I just want to just for answering the question, I think in context, it is worth pointing out that when you look at the male groups, tends to be a lot of it tends to be very sort of macho. You know, the, it's like the macho image that the girls get. It's not like the K-pop groups as a general, where they tend to be rather more sort of delicate. You know, hairstyles, makeup, and everything. The um, I'm sure there's a lot of makeup going here, but it's um like the the um I said the opposite. <laughs> the K-pop boy bands, they all look quite uh, boy bands. Oh, okay, no, yeah, no, yeah, it was yeah. girl um, groups. Yeah, so like, always, in, like they wear nothing almost. <laughs> yeah, so in Korea, like the girl bands tend to be a little bit more tough, and then the boy bands tend to be a little bit more effeminate, you know, sort of meeting in a sort of an androgynous middle. Whereas in Japan, it's the opposite. You know, the girl groups tend to be a bit cuter, not always, but as a general, tend to be a bit cuter in the stereotypical world. And the sort of the exiles, the boy bands tend to be a little bit more hard edge, a bit more macho in that kind of, again, equally sort of faked up way. Mm. So I think, yeah, I think that. It, I don't know whether the sort of young boys thing would necessarily play towards that, but um, yeah, this, this is an area that I don't really know. But I so I can't really say with the boy and girl things the reason behind it or it, how much effect that has. But I think ultimately it's one of those things where, um, yeah, I, I kind of going back to I, I think it was uh, so I think Neon maybe said this earlier. I think actually both of you said this earlier is that it's more about the I would much rather judge this kind of situation on finding out about when it's actually happening and sort of issues within the system that need to be ousted rather than judging the industry on its output. There is some output from the industry that is not really something I'm okay with, you know, stuff like the, we were talking about the swimsuit things with kids who are, well, they're teenagers, you know, they're not, uh, they should be at least 18. 
Um, I am kind of against that as an output thing, but that's something where at least we can all look at it. We know what's going on and we can say, look, this isn't really good, but you can sort of tell people, yeah, stay away from that. That's not really representative, but um, it's more the input. It's the way the system works. That's the kind of stuff that's hidden. That's the kind of stuff we need to address. And no, so interestingly enough, because I watched really a lot of like baby metal reactions and what I found that a lot of like older Western people like about baby metal is their outfits that they are not as revealing as like compared yeah. to some k-pop stuff because yeah. yeah i feel like when i look at some k-pop video like that's like 50 percent of the thing they want to present to me is like these legs. girls and how they look and the lots music of, is like yeah they do music as well <laughs> yeah i mean, I, mean I, like, i can say that like about amuse in general to be honest though like, like amuse gets a lot of fucking flack and as we know as reactors as well we've got to deal with amuse's um toughness and a bit of their shit but what i I'm will say them, yeah <laughs> <laughs> what, what i will say though is amuse are, do look after their artists very very fucking well and they are probably one of the best in the industry um, from what we know Uh, yeah, but so I, I I don't know anything about that. I would say that they seem to be more together. One, yeah, they seem to be they seem to be one of the good uh, eggs in that in terms of that. And I think there, there's a possibility if they do anything wrong, it might be that they're perhaps a little bit overly restrictive from what I've gathered. But yeah. I, I don't know that. Um, again, this is one of the important things to say is that conjecture is never a good thing. Yeah. So, you know, just sort of like saying, oh, I don't like the look of that. Or I think, oh, I think these people are bad. If you don't have any evidence, that's not a, a substantial basis to work from. Yeah. But of course, if there is something that seems to be wrong, then it's at least worth, you know, sort of investigating. Also, exactly. engaging with someone sexually without their consent. It's also a very bad thing. That is also <laughs> a no-no. I think, I think, I think that's like the root of the evil. If there's one thing that we don't need to tell people at home, I hope it's that. Um, I Apparently really hope people I really if you're watching this video and you were not aware that engaging someone with someone sexually without their consent is a bad thing, you yeah. learned a very important <laughs> lesson today. Um, unfortunately, there are some people you know, if who everyone knew that we wouldn't talk it. about it. Yeah, yeah exactly. um, well, I'm I feel sure some people know it's wrong, but can get away with it because yeah. they got the. I, I'm sure during this whole debate as well, there's a couple of things that we may have said that are information that might be slightly wrong or something that you guys yeah. in the comments would like to add as well. Please correct us if we spoke out of turn. Please comment as well on any new information that you could give us in the comments and all that as well. Uh, First and foremost, I want to say my condolences to anybody that worked there, but also mostly to the, the acts and obviously the, the boys or girls or anybody in the company that was abused by this horrible, despicable man. He's dead now, but unfortunately, the rest of the people here need to deal with his um, his well, evil acts, as it was. Um, but it's it's worth it's a it's a it's a conversation worth having and worth highlighting. Okay. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it's a uh, it's a bit of a dire one. So, um, like I said, if you've got any information on the comments down below, please keep it respectful as well, uh, first and foremost. Um, and yeah, like um, I said, give us any information that you may may want we, to. We, I Again, we, we're talking because it's something that I think needs to be talked about. But again, we don't want to influence the rumor mill, conjecture. That's not what we're doing. We're just trying to sort of piece together what we've got. So we want to keep it down from like, you know, just sort of spilling around rumors and conjecture. But we'd be very interested to know what you think about the information that is out there and if you've got more information yeah. on that. But for no, now, we're going to leave it at that. I'm going to say... Penny Nate, you can do the outro. Come on, come on, give us your best one. But I have All to right. the mic. Okay. Uh, uh, how's we're it going? going? Put your ears to the east. Hey.